It's Movie Time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and show times online at gatewayfilmcenter.com. The award-winning It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. I'm Wayne Miller. And this is It's Movie Time. Wayno. John. Wow, I know, beautiful. And an article I read recently uh, because of the death of uh, Mickey Rooney. Yes. Who they were comparing, uh, his first wife, Ava Gardner. Oh, my. Because remember when we saw this, I said, you know, in this role with the dark hair, Scarlett reminds me of an older uh, film you know, star you know, of the 40s You are and so 50s. right. You are so right. And it's Ava Gardner. In fact, I think the New York Times even mentioned that. New York Times or Wall Street Journal, one of those. And everybody, we're talking about a film that not all of Columbus, Ohio, or the world is going to see. It's called Under the Skin, a sci-fi starring Scarlett Johansson. And Wayne is talking wow. about a young woman who surely has all the attributes of a classic star. Classic star, but also she's making some good career choices Boy. in some of the mainstream ones she does, from blockbusters like the Avengers movie and playing Black yeah. Widow, to uh, the voice in the movie Her, and the Academy uh, the uh, Academy Awards folks sure. were wondering if, geez, she does such a good job, could this be a first time that we hear but not see a nominee? Uh, this is an art film. Uh, the title, again, is Under the Skin in which she, and it, it's disclosed later on, but it's very important enough in the beginning, I think, for full appreciation, that she's an alien. Yeah. <laughs> and she's coming here to, I'll use the word harvest and let you fill in once you see the movie, uh, robust men in Scotland, uh, men who are not the most desirable, but they're certainly presentable, and they have a Scottish brogue that you can barely understand. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, one article I read mentioned that. Well, you know, they nearly were nearly alien themselves. <laughs> yes, exactly, they exactly. cannot understand yes. basically a word they're saying. So uh, Jonathan Glazer, the director who also did Sexy Beast, and there's a great criminal story. Yes, yeah, yeah very good. good. Yeah. Uh, so he has multiple purposes in having this film. And believe me, it's not easy for any of us, even those of us who watch films, to discern the underlying themes. They're there, but you really have to explore and after the first 20 minutes, I thought, you know, this is a beautiful film. Yeah. The very, very dark interesting. Dark Scottish Highlands and uh, Glasgow. Oh, um, yeah. You know, from the uh, exterior uh, camera work is very good. You know, yes. you get that sense of uh, the, the, the Highlands. But uh, the interior work is also very, very, like you say, it's, it's, it's so artistic, it's nearly surreal. Look, we're riding around in a van with her. Yeah. And they're actually, it's a, a candid camera kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, digital cameras <laughs> yes. that the actual people who did not know they were being recorded, right. which you'd pull up and strike them in conversation sure. to pick her next prey. Right, asking for directions, which uh, all of this is possibly allegorical. Uh, she's looking for directions because she's trying to find her direction here right. as an alien. And uh, she then scoops them up and takes them into some very bizarre situations, which would include sexual encounters. Yes, and uh, which you would think, and that's what lures the men in, as they walk into this room with a very glassy black floor. And she keeps walking disrobes, and she's very beautiful at that. I would yeah. probably fall With her. imperfections. This is what I like about this. This is Scarlett Johansson as actress, not unwilling to bear herself in front, back, yep. and to see that she's not, you know, you think of her as a perfectly formed human being. She's not so, and that's very, very nice right. uh, for the effect and for her as an actress. Right. And as she leads these men into this room, and they begin to sink down in this black water. <laughs> An ooze. And keep, and yeah, this ooze, and she just keeps walking. I know. But like I said, I after the, the first 20 minutes, I thought, this isn't going to make sense. I'm just going to sit back <laughs> Good. and enjoy the ride, so to speak, since she's going around picking up men in this cargo van. And uh, but and some of the guys she picks, and you're right, because in uh, 
of Michael Faber's book, 2000 book, it was rather satirical. You knew that she was an alien. She was sent to Earth. She even had a name, whereas in this in the right. film she didn't. Yes. And you really didn't know what was going on. But in the book, you're right. She was picking up muscular men. They were going to fatten them up and then uh, harvest their meat and send it to <laughs> delicacies Look at back it, right. to the home, uh, the home country. And, Boy, and, and, uh, and, and some of these guys that she picks up. <laughs> I well, would not and, let it and you're on you're you're drawing an inference from one shot that has a conveyor belt with body parts on it. The the book apparently is much clearer that yeah. they're harvesting body parts. It almost reminds me of that uh, old uh, Twilight Zone episode called "To Serve Men." <laughs> when the aliens come down Good and one. they have this thing and they give all this oh, technology to I the forgot about uh, that. Uh, to uh, uh, the humans. And uh, they think, oh, this is great, you know. And then they say, oh, hey, you want to come visit our planet? So they take people <laughs> up there. And at the end, you find out that the book that they had given them, they finally deciphered it, and it was oh, to I serve remember that. Men. Well, yes, it was a good book. Great one. It was recipes. It, all right. So what do you do with it now? Now, one of the, well, one of the drawbacks for people who aren't into art films is that there's an awful lot of time spent focusing on her face and it's arguable to me whether she has yet developed as an actress to be able to sustain those close-ups of her face with just a minimum amount of uh, gesturing with the face so to speak yes and, and others would say look at she's a fine actress she's fully developed it's questionable to me when you have an art film I know I'm in for some very long lingering yes. shots you might even take a shot of the beach for instance and it will stay on there once all the action is done. Yes, but I think this is where it's almost like composing music. When is, uh, and I wrote this down, the, the, uh, the art of editing a shot. You don't want to cut too soon yes. because yes. then people get more confused and don't understand yes. what's going on, which this movie did not need any more of. But also, if it lingers too much, People get bored. It oh, yeah. becomes pretentious and becomes tedious. Yeah. And I think there were several shots, scenes in this movie where it bordered into being tedious and pretentious. And I think that it could have been tightened up. I, I find this one, uh, there, this film is not for everybody. And so I really looked. And if there was a flaw that I think, at least myself, uh, it, it would be, it could be used for tighter. And yes, and, and my thinking was, for those who are really into art films, this is not a problem. Uh, it, it like A little bit like Terrence Malick, The Tree of Life. Yeah. You know, once, these that are highly figurative, and but also linger on their shots, I can enjoy them because, as you said, there's some beautiful cinematography here. Mm -hmm. But for people who are a bit restless or want a straight narrative, yes. uh, want yeah. something to be yeah. happening, uh, it's not going to happen in this film. They'll be frustrated by it. Yeah. They'll be frustrated. Now, the other thing that I really found interesting, uh, be, spent from the beginning on, was the musical soundtrack. The score from yes. uh, uh, Michael Levi, and a score that was kind of uh, static yes. uh, in a way, but yet a melodic static to it that I found very interesting. Well, I think it complemented the visuals quite a bit. Yeah, look, be prepared for the first six minutes or so, or I don't know how long, that opening shot takes of the iris, which is yes. small, and yes. then expanse is really a kind of yeah. Kubrickian touch that, right. that promises yeah. so much, and it comes, I think it goes into her eye. It, it eventually becomes her eye, but it's a great shot that would remind you of some of our artiest directors, mm -hmm. and, and I think promises very much uh, but later on, you you have to be patient uh, with what I think the movie is promising. There's even some enigmatic motorcyclist. Yes, that you think that she's got some sort of uh, posse of motorcycle guys. <laughs> one in particular who clean up yeah, after her. Like, yes. You know, and at the very beginning, when a guy goes, he gets some uh, uh, a carcass of a young woman out of the weeds and takes it there. And this is where you begin kind of a, a, a journey with the Scarlett Johansson character. That you have to be patient uh, with what I think the movie is promising. There's even some enigmatic motorcyclist. Yes, that you think that she's got some sort of uh, posse of motorcycle guys, one in particular who clean up yeah, after her. Like, yes. you know, and at the very beginning when a guy goes, he gets some... Uh, uh, a carcass of a young woman 
out of the weeds and takes it there. And this is where you begin kind of a, a, a journey with the Scarlett Johansson character. As she almost discovers herself with clothes, new clothes, with skin. And as we find out at the end, I bet it's all a, a sure. covering from her uh, the clothing and the skin. And you're reminding me, lest I use the word, this is a very existential movie. This is about oh. defining who you are. This is about becoming somebody. As Stephen Holden said, uh, what he extracted from this and from the New York Times was that we're all aliens in disguise. Right. It's a beautiful way yeah. of saying that this applies to everybody in whatever landscape they are, where we're in all in a sense aliens, and we're all trying as, in an existential way to develop our character, to know who we are, but that, of course, doesn't happen until the very moment of death, where we are, have made all our choices, and that's who we are. Yeah. And even though she's an alien, I think you know, you're quite right, even though she is an alien, she is yet still something like a human. Yes, yeah. And all of us trying to figure out who we well, are, where we fit in. And, well, especially when she has that one uh, sexual encounter with a man who she meets and she does not destroy. Yes. And it's kind of like she was she's confused. You know, she doesn't know, you know, it's kind of like it's something new that she's discovered. And if there's a film, this is this film's very hard to compare with anything else, but what the one that comes to mind for me is the David Bowie movie in the 70s, oh. The Man Who Fell That's to Earth. Good, you know, another good alien one. trying to find himself. He's sent here on a mission yes, from this dying one. planet and uh, and he just as this Joe uh, Johansson's character tries to find himself. Yeah, um, there, there is so much more. I think that we could say this is what is good about this movie, is that it, it engenders talk. Now, Linda, who was with us, and oh. Linda's appeared. Linda Boss has appeared with us before. Was uh, not as excited about it no. as we were, and understandably so. Right. She was looking for a more linear story, and yet, as we talked about it, I think we all appreciated it more the more we talked about it. There's an appreciation. It's almost like um, like I, I compared uh, the editing to composing music, but I also yes. think there's in the in a visual sense that uh, almost like art, you know, yes. I could I could uh, uh, appreciate uh, Norman Rockwell, very uh, realistic, but also I could appreciate what some of the more abstract Picasso works can be. And so it's th this isn't for anybody, but like I said, you go in, and you just sit there, you go for the ride, you just sit back and, and relax because you're not going to, uh, you really have to work hard to try to figure it out, yeah. and is it worth that? Yeah, you know, and it's far sexier than, say, Nymphomaniac Volume 1 that's out there. Uh, it's sexy because Scarlett Johansson is arguably the sexiest young woman right. in film. And so if for nothing else do you want to go and see what she really looks like as a human being mm -hmm. and how she is developing as an actress, then Under the Skin is the movie to see. If you're bored with other movies at this time of year, and you should be, uh, if Noah what didn't quite satisfy you, then I think you give this one a chance. It's called Under the Skin. Well, you know, you know what our obligation is now. Yes, and I really, I, walking out, I had to think, uh, and I even mentioned to you, uh, this is going to be hard to grade. But the more I thought about it, uh, I had to feel, how, what would I do? What did I feel about the film? Uh, did I feel that it was worth going to uh, and seeing? Of course, I saw it for free, so sure, why not? <laughs> you know, so I thought, okay, I enjoyed it. I'm glad that I saw it. I'd give it a B. But would I recommend it to uh, a lot of people? No, I would not. <laughs> And you and I have the same opinion. I'm offering it a B because I do agree in many respects that there's some maybe wasted time editing uh, where it could have been tighter, yep. and yet at the same time it was enjoyable. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm the same way. I don't regret it. Uh, you be very careful uh, to whom you recommend a film. There are aficionados out there who will love it. There are others who will be bored. And it's your obligation as a film critic to, to know which, fi which film Right. Uh, is going to apply to which person. And it could disturb some people, particularly the one guy that she picked up, the lingering shots on a guy who kind of looked a little bit like El the elephant man. Oh, well, he did, I know. Cuter brother. And she loves his hands. Yes, <laughs> yes. He's great. <laughs> anyway, it's really about Scarlett Johansson. Yep. Who is an alien by any definition. <laughs>